Hello, good morning, good evening, how you guys doing? So we have a new update to Shake and Tune uh, 4.01. Uh, it has a couple new features. Uh, we'll get into that. Let's see. Boop. So we get a static frequency map. We're going to get an axis map. And we got a new update to belts. Uh, so let's get into it here again. So there's my printer. This is what we're going to be testing everything on. Uh, it's a V2 350, serial 3812. It's got the Vitali tap. It had the uh, flex tap in it, but uh, it broke. I'll make a video on that later. Uh, obviously, CAN bus, umbilical, a bunch of Mandela Rosework stuffs, um, two Nevermores. So, this one right here is filled with scorch. This one is carbon. Um, the combination, because my bed only chamber only gets about 50 C, the combination seems to be working to control the uh, the smell of the VOCs. As you guys know, this one only prints ABS, so I have replaced it every what 50 hours or so. The scorch can last longer. Um, in the back here, I have the Steve Build Z umbilical mod. It basically just takes all the wires and puts it in a sleeve and goes down. Working pretty good. Um, I will say I like it better than the cable chains. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of wires, right? It just has the uh, the lights going into it. Actually, the lights no, the lights aren't going in it. It has the two motors and the Y end stop, and then just feeds right in. And then Rama idlers in front. So that's the system we're testing on. Um, I haven't tuned this one. You're gonna see a bunch of graphs. I haven't tuned it all the way because, as I said, my tool head broke. So that's why it's got the tally tap in it now. So this is the new first new one. It's a static frequency. Um, I asked Fricks to give us some sort of map so we can kind of see what's going on, and maybe something else is happening. So the inputs now, um, if you want to create this graph, you're going to have to manually put a one here on the create graphs, and you can set all your parameters, um, your accelerations per hertz. If you don't set it, it takes the default that's in your clipper. Um, your printer config. So I default mine to 100. It's kind of a where I like it to be. 75 is default. Some people will do 125, 150. I think that's a little much. Um, you're going to be masking a lot of stuff that you might need to fix. But 100, I feel, gets rid of some of the, the minor inconveniences you find in your graphs while not masking a whole lot. If you have multiple accelera uh, accelerometers, you can define the chip here. Uh, the shake tune will now handle multiple accelerometers. So if you have one in your bed, one in your tool head, um, Clipper will do, let you do like an X and Y. So really you can only have two accelerometers. Well, you can have multiple accelerometers in your printer config. However, the testing parameter will only allow you two. So I need to do more testing, see if I can get a third, just take a random accelerometer and test it. I'm thinking it's going to work. I don't know. But you set everything here, and then these are the graphs. So this orange spike you see here is the main frequency, so the 120 hertz. It'll give you the energy at the different times. This is my trouble spot. That's why I did it. It's not giving you a whole lot on this one. If you look at the next one I did was at 75 hertz, and you can see it kicks out a resident frequency around 140, what is 145-ish. And, of course, you can see it's kind of stable here. This right here is telling me that there's probably something vibrating there because it should have a constant energy. And uh, we'll see that the 75, there's nothing on the 75 in X. There is something at the about 120 in, watt in X. So this should be constant, but it's doing one of these, um, well, the time goes, actually goes like this. So it starts hard and then it decays going upward. So that's telling me something's there. But this is just kind of a... Uh, a graph to kind of keep a history of the changes you've made. So say you go in and you start messing with your umbilical or your XY joint and you want to see what happened, you can run this test because um, we're going to try and troubleshoot and you can keep this as a kind of a, a uh, baseline of where you were and where you're going to. The next one is axis map. This is a new one. Um, unable to determine correctly. This is still a work in progress. So it's supposed to give you, in this side, it's going to tell you the direction it traveled, the accelerometer traveled. 
and x than y than z, um, it doesn't always work. And it only full, will fully work on a V2. Um, Trident's not going to get you the Z, obviously. Uh, bed Slingers, you got two accelerometers, not going to get you either one, really. But it, it, it's not, not the best. Let me see if I got a better graph, because that's not really going to help you explain all the stuff in it. Uh, let's see, do I have a better one? Okay. Let's just replace it with this one. So, it will give you, it's supposed to give you X, Y, and Z, or X, Y, and Z. So, in my case, based on the orientation of the accelerometer, this, uh, my negative Z is actually my X axis. My Z axis should be my X axis. Um, but you can see that the, what it thinks it traveled. This is all highly dependent upon your acceleration that you use to test it, your speed you use to test it, your velocity, or your speed, where it's located, the angle it's on, and it tells you the angle offsets here. So it always has a hard time on the Z, and that's because my Z travel is not very fast. So if you're getting, not getting good data here, you might want to, once again, it has a testing uh, thing, it has a box like this, so you can set it up. You might want to... Up, update its, uh, its speed and its acceleration to try to get it to force it to, to move. It's still a work in progress. This accelerometer noise is different than Clipper's accelerometer noise. This is this right here is the main point because when you guys see this, you will be like, oh, it's too high. So this is actually its dynamic noise. Clipper gives you a static noise. So what Clipper does is it just puts the measures the tool head when it's not moving, just in static, in place, and it says, okay, if you've got greater than 100, you got issues. Well, this is actually when it's, it's, where am I thinking? this is derived from when it's moving, so when it's going like this, it gets this noise profile here, it gets this profile, and then it calculates the noise level at millimeters per second, so your noise level, your speed. About, this is gonna be updated, I believe, in, in a future one to give this more context, but 300 is probably good. It says it's too high. It's, it's probably good. If you get something like a thousand here, you've got some issues. Your graphs are going to look, you know, all crazy like this. But something like this, you know, this is your noise level generally. These are your signals, right? You can see that my signals in Y are not that great. So we have X, Y, and Z, let me, let me clean out some of this stuff here again. There we go, X, Y, Z. So you can see the noise level is basically all, all of this is basically my noise level. This is my signal here. This is my signal here for X, which for always will get me, or at least in my setup on this machine, give me negatives. This will return back a negative Z. And you can see the graphs, right? So X, when it moves in X, it's giving Z. Y is giving Y. This is what's kind of throwing me off, is that it's, this is the signal here, and this is the noise, but it's giving me a Z. So it should be giving me an X. But once again, my tool head's not moving fast enough to really excite it too much, and it's having trouble with this. Still a work in progress. All right, we're going to do work in progress but this is what the new axis map and just so you guys all know axis map is just for the visuals it actually has no bearing on any sort of calculation for your input shapers your belt shapers or your vibration graphs so that's this one this is your old belts we're all very familiar with it um, this has been changed to this so the, the top graph, this graph right here is still the same. And what he's given you, uh, Frix has done, is given us kind of like a landing pad. Where's this at? So we got a little landing pad here, right? We want to keep the differences. So this is going to, this is a belt axis, A and B, and it's kind of the cross belt comparison. So he takes the values, the minimax values, and he plugs them along. The uh, peaks have been changed. They're now Greek letters. So you have alpha and beta. 
he didn't find a peak here. He got rid of the uh, he got rid of the green zone. Just notice that we used to have this green zone here. He got rid of that. So if we go back here, it's about one. It was, it's, well, it should be green zones probably somewhere up there. But anyway, uh, so this is too low to be given a peak or a matching peak. Should have found this guy. Didn't. So this is uh, basically you want to keep your things in here. This is the only one I'm able to do. Uh, the rest of mine, which you guys might find, where my red go? There, where'd it go? There it is. What you might find is you might get a loop way up here, and then it continues on, or you're going to get a loop way down here, right? Some sort of loop, some sort of crazy thing. Uh, generally, it's going to say if you got something up here, your A belt's going to be a little tight. Something down here, oh, A. Something here is going to be B belt, a little too tight. Or vice versa, but I think it's this. So you just gotta. I'm not so comfortable with with this graph right here. Uh, this graph right here is still the one I use. Put, give it a happy face. Woo! Um, because it's able, I'm able to see the peaks, and I can kind of tell. This will come back later. That is my X. So that's all that's changed. Let me get rid of all these. Oh, can't get rid of all. Okay, so that's all that's changed is is this these two things here, or these three. So we go down. As you can see, this right here, that uh, that is my tap. That is Mr. Tap, which I don't have in Y, surprisingly. So that means on Vitaly Tap, I have to fix my screws in the back. So my my magnets, effectively, this is what this is magnets, probably most likely. Knowing this uh, Vitaly tap, that's magnets. Got to fix, but you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to do it because it's not worth it to me to take it apart right now. I got things I got to print, and I can just run EI. You know, oh, let's get rid of that. I could run EI. It seems to be canceling it out. If I'm really concerned, if I'm really starting to see it, I'll, for now, I'll drop it down to three hump. Which is still giving me a very good smoothing, 6,900, and my Y over here is still limiting it at 3,700 for EI. Well, I can actually use MZV on this one, so it's 4,000. Surprisingly, I get zero percent. Uh, first time I've seen that uh, on Shaking Tune. So even if I do three hump, uh, smoothing is 0.09. My smoothing over here is 0.15. So I can bring this all the way down to three hump without negatively affecting anything. Um, vibrations profile still the same. Once uh, yeah, just a recap, uh, we're staying the green. The green is good. And then if you're doing so, this is more organic. You're going to use these for organic stuff. Organ or oh, it's a G missing. Organic. And this is going to be for structural. Why structural? Why organic? So organic, you're going to have curves. You're going to an organic is going to go basically through this whole circle, right? You're going to have angles or not angles. You're going to have smooth surfaces, curves, whatever. This is what you're going to want to use when you have box type shapes. Where, where did my thing go? Again? There we go. When you have box type shapes like this, or shapes. Just that are kind of rectangular, kind of like that, you know, whatever. Structural shapes, you can use this one. This this angular profile here, this one here, you can use these speeds. And you're going to stay in the in the valleys here. Oops, you stay in the valleys. And you don't have to worry about, because um, you don't necessarily have to worry about all these angles. You may have a very small part that is an uh, off angle, off angle being anything that's not 0, 90, 45, or 135, your X, Y, A, and B axis. If you've got a little small one, so let's say you've got, oh, let's say you're printing the uh, X, Y joint, right? So it's going to come like this, it's going to angle out, it's going to come this, it's going to angle out, and then I think it does something like this, right? 
Well, mostly it's all structural here. You got you got a slight angles on the corners, right? But you're if you don't really care, right? Because it's very short. You're not necessarily going to see that. Um, you mainly got straight parts, right? You got big, long, straight parts here. You can go ahead and use your angular speed profile over over this guy. But if you care about these these slight angles that you're going to have, right? Then you're going to want to use your organic speeds or the middle of the global speed energy because it takes into account all the angles. Your angular speed just takes into account the main angles. And that's it. That's the uh, the the update to Shake Tune 4.01. Uh, so I think Frix is going to be working on some other stuff. He you know never stops working. I don't know when that guy sleeps. But these are the updates. Um, any questions? You need some help? Come jump into Voron Discord, usually in the Residence channel, and uh, see if we can't help you out. All right. Well. Thank you very much, and have a good day.